Good evening. Welcome to the meeting of the Mountainside Board of Education. In accordance with the state sunshine law and state regulations, adequate notice of this meeting was provided by mailing a notice of the time, date, location, and instructions for accessing the meeting to the Union County Local Source and Westfield Theater. Filing the same with the borough clerk, posting the notice at the main access door of the Mountainside Board of Education building and the Mountainside Board of Education website. These meetings are reserved for board deliberation and for review of items contained within the agenda. The board reserves the right to vote on action items. The board welcomes the participation of interested individuals. We encourage questions about specific school practices, incidents, and events to be brought directly to the school administration. Public comment will be permitted at the beginning of the meeting for agenda items only. Each participant is asked to give his or her name and address prior to making a statement. In addition, time will be allotted at the end of the meeting for public comment on any items. Speakers shall limit their comments to three minutes. Roll call, please. Mr. Gallagher. Here. Mr. Goodman. Here. Dr. Ruiz Pietro. Mr. Hyman. Here. Mrs. Pupo. Here. Mrs. Shiana. Here. Mr. Vance. Here. Uh, at this time, I would like a motion to go into executive session. It's so moved. Uh, 6.34, we should be returning about an hour. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We will see you in one hour.
Good evening. It is 7.36 and we are returning from our executive meeting at this time. Can everybody please stand up? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I would like a motion to approve our meeting from 9-19, September 19th. So moved. Comments or questions? Roll call, please. Yeah. Yes. 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 At this time, I'd like to open the floor for public participation on any agenda items that we are voting on tonight. Please come up to the podium, state your name, address. Seeing none, I am president's report. I really don't have a report. I just want to give a compliment to the PTO for an outstanding fall festival. I woke up in the morning and said, this is going to be disastrous. And it was so organized, well prepared. The kids looked like they were having a blast. The parents were excited. Uh, and I have to say, I don't know if it was because it was confined. It looked packed. There was a lot of kids here and the signs, I mean, you. Everything was just very organized. So thank you to the PTO, the committee. It was, in my opinion, an outstanding event. And that's all I have to say. Superintendent's report. All right. I'm just going to switch up my order a little bit. I will do a couple of uh, tip, uh, things that are happening right now, and then I'm going to be sharing our NJSLI screen test results with you. So to um, Piggyback on what Mrs. Grupo just said, the Fall Festival was amazing for uh, those of you who were able to attend. The kids really had a good time. It was amazing to me how many blow-up houses and things we were able to fit in our gym. It actually made our gym look a whole lot bigger, I will say. Um, and the uh, cotton candy was flowing all day long. And the tricky trays and everything. So kudos to everybody who worked so, so hard on making this such a great event. And I did not hear, it, it, honestly, I heard from some people who felt that it probably was better attended, being that it was a rainy Saturday and so many other things got canceled, mm -hmm. and nobody wanted to be in their homes for the sixth straight rainy weekend, yeah. that um, they all came, and it was a really good turnout and very well organized. Um, also, a shout out to the MEF. They had their glow ride since our last meeting and that seemed to go very nicely children really seemed to enjoy it and they had a movie afterwards the weather again not so great so they ended up coming indoors and did the movie inside here we were able to accommodate their need and provide them with that opportunity um we had just finished up last two weeks ago the first week of october was the week of respect which is required by the state of new jersey and then this week is a additional requirement, which is Violence Awareness Week. And so during both of those weeks, we really take the time to home in on acceptance, how to be a good friend, how to be a good citizen, how to be a good classmate. We remind students of our HIV policy, of our zero tolerance for treating anyone um, with um, disdain or, or treating them differently because of any of their identifying factors, whether it be religion, whether it be gender, race, any of those, and really trying to hone in on how to create this school community. We had activities happening at both buildings. The PTO and MES, a huge shout out to them for underwriting Sergeant Tom Rich, who came to um, give a presentation. He presented to our third and fifth graders and then our six to eight, all about social media, awareness. And then he presented to parents that evening. We had about 60 parents who came in attendance um, and really just very straightforward talk and really good messaging about awareness and how to protect yourselves. He, you know, as he said to the students, he was never going to tell the parents that not to give their children their phones. He wasn't going to take them away. But how to um, how to well you know how to receive it? I know uh, Bill, you were able to attend. I hope that you found it to be worthwhile. Yeah, no, it was it was uh, very informative uh, to the point of the, taking your phone away. It, it was a reality check, like 
they remember if they would ever leave, they you can't respond to, they're going to respond to me, whatever you to say, right? So uh, remember that's a tracking beacon. Uh, you never want to take away the tracking beacon from them. Um, you don't think about it that way, right? You think about it just as a, a sponsor. No, I think he did an excellent job. And uh, I think there was some talk that he mentioned. He's got a bit of a rotation, like the, the messaging, you know, maybe every three years, every two years, whatever, becomes more relevant and he changes up his, 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 his uh, information, but especially being local here uh, from Summit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, was, I thought it was a, a great resource to add to kind of our in our program moving mm -hmm. forward. So. Yep. And the students as well, we heard from a lot of parents whose kids went home and were talking about the message and they were talking about the things that they took away. Um, even if it was some of the funny things that he shared, but he, he made an impact. So very, very pleased that we were able to bring him in and for the support that we were able to build to, to help underwrite this. Um, at Beachwood, the PTO gave for a magician to come in, but he did magic all centered around bullying and awareness and sensitivity and respect. So he used that as his guiding theme, but yeah, he brought in some some magic into it, which was perfect for our K to two, our pre pre K to two, um, and so the children really got to enjoy that as well. Smack in the middle of all that, we had Fire Awareness Week, so uh, kudos and thank you to the Mountainside Fire Department. They were on site in both buildings doing educational opportunities for the students. And at Beachwood, they all got to go out and see the fire truck, which is always a highlight. Um, so we had that going on as well. So it's really been very, very busy. Um, throw in there today, Mrs. Castro, my, my executive secretary and I attended a training through the county for CUSAC. So just a reminder, CUSAC. Um, when I stop twitching from all of the details of everything that we need to include, there are quite a bit lots of details and lots of pieces, but just as a reminder, they come in, it's typically every three years. We have not had it since at least six, if not more, because of COVID that bypassed it and there were waivers being given for a number of years for high performing districts. So it's been a number of years, but this is an opportunity for the State Department. It is our county state, our county um, executive superintendent and his staff. They come in and they look at personnel, they look at our evaluation system, they look at our ratings, they look at our SGOs of personnel, they look at curriculum. So they will come in and look at every curricular document that we have to make sure that we are compliant, that we are up to code. They will look at operations, which deals with the day-to-day -day happenings within the district. They will look at governance, so they will come back and they will check our policies. They will look at these types of things. Have we had all the things board approved that need to be board approved? Do we have documentation? They will look at fiscal. So they will look at our board office and where our purchase orders are. So there's a lot of different components that come into this. Next month, you will be asked to approve what are called our DPRs, um, which are our performance ratings that we do a self-assessment. And then we upload a, a lot, a slew of data to support all of these areas, and then the county will be coming in around January to be checking out all of these different things. They will also walk our facilities. That is part of it as well. They will look at our buildings and make sure of our safety and our security and all of those pieces. So there's a lot of components. There are points given for all of these areas or points taken away if there are pieces that, um, that may be lacking within that process. So that is uh, going to be quite an undertaking um, that a number of us will be really spending a lot of our time working on over the next couple of months because we are required by December 15th to have uploaded all of this data and all of this information. Some of it comes from this school year, some of it comes from last school year. So they can go up to like a full calendar year worth of information that we put together. So do we have a head start from the last time we thought that this was coming or, or not? Not really, because we had started to work on it. I mean, that was the year I just began. Yeah, I so we were just wrapping our head around it a little bit. And then there was talk about waivers still. So it was a little bit questionable. questionable. Yeah. And then we had the lovely world of COVID and everything just got put on hold. Uh, uh, okay. Yep. 
Um, so questions about any of that before I start to share with you our test results. <laughs> All right, so what I'm sharing with you this evening predominantly are our test results from our NJSLA, our state testing, from last spring. So these tests are administered to all of our students, grades three through eight. And we take a look at their uh, results. They are tested in math, language arts, and in grades five and eight science. So these are the areas. This is the first time in a couple of years that we have back-to-back -back data. If you remember last year, I kind of shared with you our first test out of COVID as compared to this year I'm sharing with you what was last year as well as this current school year. So we'll take a look at that in a couple of different ways. So we're going to start with math. So what I have sharing with you, and you'll see this on the, this slide and the next slide, are our test results. The top line of each grade level are mountainside scores, and below it are the state average scores. The goal always is to be up in this area of four and five. If you recall, New Jersey state testing, students are scored on a five level rubric, if you will, with five being exceeding expectations for meeting. That is our ultimate goal is that our students are the vast majority are in a four or a five. And Three are those students are kind of on that bubble on the cusp of approaching. Partially is level two in the orange and in the red we have students who did not yet meet expectations. So as a point of reference, if we look at just third grade, we had 0% of our students on level one, 4% of our students are on level two, 17% on level three approaching, and we successfully had the vast majority, 56% at meeting and 24% at exceeding. So overall, 80% of our stu students in third grade met or exceeded, which when compared to the state, 46%. So we have a very nice, strong percentage there. Just as a point to remember, because it always takes me a little bit of time, it's good when you get to yellow and blue, we want our percentage to be lower than the state because those are those areas where they're showing that a higher percentage needs support and we're showing a lower percentage needs support. The other piece I always like to mention as we start to go through these is when we look at percentages in relation to our student class size. So for third grade last year, we had about 75 children. So that 4%, when you look at it, is really representing a, a very small number of students who are testing in this level. Um, even when we get to some of our larger classes, you might see where some of the percentages are lower, but again, we're not talking about a vast number of students. So this slide has math for grades three, four, five, and six. Again, as you notice, if we predominantly look at our group purple area, in all of them, we are showing a very strong, close to 50% or almost double, a percentage rate of not meeting or exceeding. I'm very pleased with our students with that outcome. When we look at our seventh grade, we see the same thing. And then we start to get into our um, other areas. So in Algebra 1 and Geometry, one of the things to note, please remember, Algebra 1 is Algebra 1 for all. So that is our, all of our 8th graders and some of our 7th graders. So there is no, the state does have a grade 8 test. We do not have students who took that grade 8 test. 
our students took the Algebra 1 test. And as I'll show you later, this was a really nice strengthening of our Algebra 1 over last year's test results. Um, as we are entering, because this is that second year of testing for this. Um, geometry, very impressive. Our students who took it, 100%. And these are students, if you please remember. It is a limited number of students, but they are taking high school geometry as eighth graders. And 100% of them met or exceeded those expectations. It is very nice. We are very pleased with, with the results that we are seeing um, and, and where our students are at. I'm sure I asked this over here. The kids are in pre algebra in sixth grade. What are they? They would be testing with the, so our pre algebra students in sixth grade still take the sixth grade test. So it's only the seventh graders that are differentiated that are taking algebra and they want to take that Correct. different non grade level test. Correct. Okay. And that's one of the things, so I just jump back that slide because one of the things that we do notice is that last year's sixth grade, we had a higher percentage. We were close to the state average of those who were approaching. And as I'll share with you later, you know, our takeaway is what does this mean to us? So we look at what are called evidence statement tables um, that give us the areas of where our students fell down. And one of the things we found last year, um, and I don't know whether this would be appropriate here or not, we'll find out when we look at those, those scores. Some of this has to do with just basic skills that the kids may not have, and we have to then shore that up. Some of it may be the needs of the class, because you're going to see when we look at cohort of the same groups of students, they may just score lower over time, which has to do with the makeup of that group, the needs of that group. Um, some of these, maybe we found this once before, and I'm pleased to see it not as, as pronounced. We found that some of our seventh grade students didn't test as well previously, because remember, they're taking pre-algebra, but they're getting the general seventh grade test. Our seventh grade curriculum does not fully align there because we're infusing that pre-algebra in there. So sometimes that may be what we do in evidence table. We may find that really the only difference was those standards were not as well aligned because they're just not appropriate for pre-algebra. Um, so this is our comparison. So let's look at the bars first, and then I'll come down to the dots. The bars are showing us light blue was last year's 21-22 test results. Darker blue was just this most recent year, 22-23. So if we look at grade three over here, what you're seeing is that really two years ago, we had 73% of that grade group score proficient or higher. This past year, 80%. So different kids, but same grade level. And that's what we looked at all the way across the board. Grade four, we stayed pretty much the same. Grade five, we went from 61 to 78. Grade six, we did see a decrease. However, I'll come back, just keep that in mind so we come back to the meaning of that a little bit with the dots in a minute. Grade seven, pre-algebra, we stayed pretty solid. Where I really was so impressed was to see this jump in our algebra one. We went from 63% up to 77%. And this to me is really indicative of really honing in strong pre-algebra and getting our kids really ready for that algebra course. And geometry, we are very pleased that we've had two years in a row of that. So same grade, different, different groups of students. What we chose to do also, because we now have some data to share, is look at students as cohorts. So the dots correspond to the same students. So for example, in grade three, our that group of students were 73% proficient or higher. That same group of students, when they went to grade four, they saw growth. We saw growth of them from 73% proficiency to 78% proficiency. So that's where we put in the dots to show this piece going across. So we'll see that our grade four, which is last year's grade five, 
curve in frame six stayed pretty much the same. So here, coming back to this, our grade five group that had 61% proficiency did see some measured growth the following year at that 63. So while they weren't as high as the previous year, when we look at that as a cohort, they did not decrease. We did not see a loss in that for those students. Um, the one spot where we did see a little bit of, a, of that change, but again, expected, was grade seven to grade eight, where they went from pre-algebra to algebra. But again, high school level courses, and very pleased to still see growth overall as to what that looks like for our students. <coughs> We then also need to look at our subgroups. So going across, staying the same, light blue was two years ago, and 22, 23 is the darker. The one thing I caution about when we look at all of these areas is because Mountainside may have a small population group in any of these subcategories, one student can quickly skew some of these percentages. However, and I will say that there is the allowance that if you have below 10 in a subgroup, then you can suppress that information. My personal feeling is we have data. I want to share with you the data. So I just do caution that when we look at some of this, um, it may only be a difference of just one or two students that makes, um, makes one of the, this, these bars look more significant. ML is actually multilingual learners. It is replacing ELL, which were our English language learners. Yes. Um, so it is just a changeover in, in what we are looking at. Um, but we did see, again, we did see drastic changes um, over time with our math scores. We saw a little bit here and there. We saw some gains. I was very pleased to see our section 504. We saw an improvement here in uh, the percentages meeting and exceeding. Um, we saw some of it really staying the same. We saw some growth uh, in others. But regardless of the numbers that it impacts, again, our job, our goal is to name and claim our students. So if we see a drop, why do we see a drop? Let's look at that student versus for anything else. What are we doing to meet their needs? So what does it tell us? Um, kind of already shared a lot of this with you, but overall, if we took all of those charts with you, 77% of our students met or exceeded compared to the state average of 41%. Very, very pleased with that. Um, the vast majority were in that approaching category. And remember too, please, as we look at this, that approaching could be a difference of one, one question. So we look at how far were they in that span. Um, we will look at the evidence statement tables that I've already referred to for areas of need for reinforcement. We did recognize, as I said, to, to increase the proficiency with a few of those subgroups and we'll further evaluate to figure out. What are we doing? We're in our second year of implementation and this to me is very important to know. Last year was our first year of implementing a brand new math curriculum, a brand new math series. It is not atypical to see a decrease in test scores when you bring in a new math curriculum. We did not see that. So that is a testament to the staff, that is a testament to the work that they've put into this. Um, we again are continuing team meetings. This happens all the time, whether it is grade level teams, whether it is subject area teams, or whether it is special ed teams. Meeting with supervisors, meeting with our specialists to analyze the data. You'll see this in the ELA as well. We have expanded the use of iReady personalized pathways to up to grade five. So we are looking to use that program to really drive individual instruction. We sent a number of teachers this summer to receive virtual training in what is a newer program called OG Math. It is very, very, um, Center-based, it is very um, hands-on based, mathematic instruction that we are now utilizing in special education with a number of our students. We also have now brought the thinking classroom down to grade five. 
So if you remember, Mrs. Starling has moved from grade six to grade five. She has brought the thinking classroom with her. Um, and so she is very excited to be bringing that problem solving opportunity to our fifth graders. Mr. Berger was already using it. He was kind of piloting it last year. So as much as I want to say we um, expanded it, it is, we're expanding it across the grade. Uh, math stations, we're utilizing them across the board. Continuing our ARP funded math clubs. You may recall last year we expanded that down to Beachwood. That is going to be starting up within the next couple of weeks over at Beachwood as well as an after school program for students who may benefit from that additional instruction. Um, it is grant funded, so it is something that we are able to fund this coming school year and we will need to evaluate how to look at that and its benefit as we move forward. Um, and our data meetings are continuing. At the middle school level, we do continue our collaboration with Berkeley Heights. We are continuing to use the thinking classroom at the middle school level. We will look at those evidence statement tables. In grade six, we have a quarter course on math enrichment, which is continuing as a way to help support our students. Um, also, our before and after school future mathematicians club. So again, students might need it and providing targeted OP opportunity periods, as well as before and after school support from teachers. So being able to get that to our students. Moving on to ELA, just again, same concept as you look at the charts. Um, our ELA is just amazing. I, I just can't even say enough. We, if we look at our percentages, our grades three, four, and five, every group there is above 80% in our meeting and senior. We are very, very proud and very pleased with the teacher's work and the efforts of our students. Um, they really are. We have our grade six, you know, 78 percent. Grade and seven and eight, we really are just, they are very, very strong. It is a, a testament to the work that the teachers are doing in their classrooms. Um, and, and what it is that they are sharing, and the, the efforts and the expectations of our kids, um, and, and seeing that. We have very, very few down in those lower three tiers, and all of those we look at, that we look at, and, and we evaluate what we need to support them. So similar, similar um, side by side, if you will, Looking at our 21 22, so as a grade level, we saw again just this one area, grade five growing into grade six. We saw some drop there. However, again, if you look at that cohort of students, look at their growth. They went from 65% in 21 22 up to 78%. So that was over a 10% growth for that cohort of students in a year over year. So really very pleased with, with what we're seeing in that. Uh, similar in our subgroups, as we look at all of those, we saw some growth, we saw some reduction. Um, one thing to point out, you'll see at the bottom, our multi-language, we did not have any, there's no secondary bar just because we did not have any students who qualified in that area the year prior. So that's where that, that difference is of what you're seeing. Um, state comparison, overall 85% of our students better exceeded compared to 51% of the state. Again, we noted that any de decreased proficiency, we will further evaluate and target. So what do we have? We have, in addition to our existing programming, we, if you recall, we brought in the 95% group programming. That is a phonics basis to help shore up some of our phonetic skills starting at K to two. Word study at grades three to five and an intervention program specific to our special education and aid students. We have the personalized pathways also expanded in reading for grades three to five. Um, we have a couple of other programs that align with our teacher's college units of study. 
we are still using ARP as well as Title I funding to support our AIM programming and supplemental reading programs before and after school. Very, very intentional at Beachwood. Our AIM program is going to focus primarily on funds. If students can't read, they can't do a lot of other stuff to access learning. So primarily, any student who's receiving our basic skills AIM program, it will be phonics-based with this intervention program with the goal of when skills are mastered, they move on and they move out. And we continue to build. Um, professional development continuing and differentiated support for our students, both struggling and advanced, wanting to, again, we have great scores. Let's move more of them into the exceeding. Let's look at those pieces. Let's identify ways. Science is grades five and eight. Um, when, of course, you know, you look at those scores and then you look at grade eight and you're like, oh, 46%, what does that mean? Well, look at the state. The state average of anything going, they only do it on a four points, not five point rubric. So we're looking at the group levels three and four. At the state level, while we look at 46, I mean, we've just been looking at ABC and nine yet, so it's hard not to see that in question. But when you look at it, the state average is 18%. So, you know, for, for us, the, these percentages are really, really solid, and they're really nice to see, 60% at grade five. When we look at growth, we saw really significant growth. This is what to me is important. Year over year, we saw nice, significant growth. Not the year before, grade five was at 45%, still above state average, but we went up to 60% this past year and a 10% increase at grade eight. There's no cohort to look at because there's a three-year experiment between them. Um, our subgroups, please also remember this is even more magnified in the limited number because rather than looking at our entire three to eight, we are looking at just grade five and grade eight. So that's where you're going to see a more magnified positive or negative situation. What are we doing in science? We have introduced at the middle school level whoops, a program called Gizmos that middle school teachers all received training on it at our professional development day just a few days ago. And it is a standards-based online program. It provides virtual simulations so they can look at simulations online, demonstrates labs. Um, Exploration really accentuates the topics that they're doing. It also has what are called STEM cases, which are much more in depth and it allows a lot of problem solving. There's literature connections, there's scientific connections. The STEM cases are more like multi-day assignments and lessons that the staff may be engaging the students in, but following the scientific method, taking them through it. Um, I, they're just getting their feet wet with it, but the feedback I've heard so far has been very positive. Um, Lincoln, who we use for benchmarking, also now has science assessments that are linked and aligned with the state testing. So we just introduced them briefly at the end of last year, and we're going to be utilizing them this year. With the goal of not just using them at the tested grade levels, but for example, using it at seventh grade, to benchmark our students and get a sense of what do we need to do to help them prepare for when they have the testing in the eighth grade. Um, continuing departmental planning, Open Scient, which is a program that is used at Berkeley Heights. We are continuing to utilize some of those programs in our instruction. Um, implementing our mandated climate change standards. So that's falling into our science, which will Again, anything that becomes a standard, we're going to eventually see in the testing. So we're getting that involved with our students and evaluating the data. I will say we get much, much more limited result data and results from the state when it comes to science than we would from math and for ELN. So the takeaways are a little bit more difficult, but we still evaluate those test scores. Um, to share with you, beyond NJSLA, there's other state-required tests that take place. One is called the Access for L's. 
This has to do with an English language proficiency test, and it is assessment that determines our language proficiency for students who English is not their primary language. They come into our school, they may be born out of the country. We are required to evaluate them. We give them a, um, what's called a WIDA test to gauge their level of knowledge. If they have a need, we then supplement and provide them with support through um, ELL services in a district our size. We do not have a dedicated ELL program because our numbers do not require that. That does not mean we do not give them services. So through our AIM program, through our teachers, we are giving them a lot of targeted support in specific language acquisition. We give them skills. We have um, dedicated monies to provide programming other things that give them access. This past year, we had four students who need, and then, so after getting services, they then take a test at the end of the year, this access for helps. Um, this year, we had two, four students who participated. It is gauged on a six-point scale. So nothing is all aligned. <laughs> this goes from emerging, there's actually level one and two are both considered emerging and then it progresses up to reaching. We had um, two students who scored at that level two of emerging, and we had two students who scored at an overall proficiency of a level four, which is expanding. So they are still growing. All four of these students, some of them are no longer in district. They may have moved on to Governor Livingston, or they may have moved, but any students who remain in district will continue to receive services this year, and then they test again. So they continue to test as they until they really test out once they reach an expected level of proficiency. The other state test that goes on is what's called the DLM. It is designed for students with our most significant cognitive ability disabilities for where the NJSLA is just not appropriate. They cannot really access that type of testing for learning. So this is a test that is based on very, very specific skills. So the students take it in ELA and in math, and they are tested on a subset of very specific skills that their grade level should potentially be able to um, show mastery in or their development. Uh, no students who are currently here in at Mountainside took this test. These are we have students. We had three students who took it who attend alternative placement schools. They are in out-of-district placement, specialized special ed programs. This goes on a four-point scale, from emerging to advanced. We had all three students who scored at an emerging level in ELA. Two of our students scored emerging in math, and one scored as approaching, so they were at the level two. Um, these tests are done in a very, very different format. Um, and quite, quite honestly, are not an easy test for our students who have that level of need to even participate in. Um, and that kind of covers all of the evaluations, all of the tests that we have. Any comments or questions on these results? I had two. Um, so one, maybe just to get your, your take on science. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I, this is just over the last couple of years, science scores, uh, whether NJSLA or, or other ways that we were, we were able to assess over the COVID window, feel like they were they lagged a bit behind, not just not inside, but obviously statewide. Um, I'm wondering if, if is that, to be recall that there's some, there was some rationale that, well, science is more hands-on, you need to be in the lab, that sort of thing. Is, 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 are there reasons for why science seems to be you know, across the state, probably nationally as well? A bit behind the other core subjects, or is it hard to point to? I, th I think it's really hard to point to. I think in some cases, you know, conversations I've had is that, you know, the, the approach to the test is very different than the ELA and math. It seems to be the types of questioning. If, if you know, you look at, you're taking, it's also once every three years. Right. So you're taking three years of science knowledge and wrapping it into one test at the end of eighth grade. And so it could be a topic and a subject area that the kids learned in sixth grade and they haven't been exposed to. Because we they didn't learn it, but their exposure to it, their ability to respond to it, is going to look very different 
than when you're doing ELA seventh grade that is based on seventh grade standards. Yeah. Yeah. That was begs the question. Why not put science as a test you would you would offer every year to, to all grades? Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen this year. Um, other question was uh, obviously Berkeley Heights has had turnover at the director supervisor level for STEM now as a combined position. What's our what's our latest? That you had you had it up there as one bullet under math, I think. How's the is that Natalie? How's how's that relationship as relates to just maybe just in general? Mm -hmm. even, even I think that everybody's questions. just starting to get to know each other, so we haven't had the opportunity to really schedule those meetings, but they will be upcoming. Um, just kind of figuring out who all who all the new players are, yes, and where yeah, there's, exactly. there's anyone coming. In, um, so, yeah. But I anticipate it to continue just as positively as it always has. I mean, our a testament to last year the word study program when we were looking to adopt the new program, working with Mary Beth Copas and yes. working with their teachers. Yes. Um, just as we had done with math previously, very very positive um, results of those conversations. So I expect those to continue. That's great. I, I get the sense that thinking classroom uh, in general could be something that uh, maybe we can help with mm -hmm, because yes. of the way we've seemingly adopted it uh, or introduced it and, and spread it um, at whatever percentage it's being used in the class compared to some of the feedback that we hear out there. So. Okay. It's very impressive to see because I, I witnessed it and it was great. I mean, the kids are really engaged. They hold the whole conversation. I mean, and I think the part of it too is just again, I think a lot of it may be whatever the expectation is and the approach to it. Um, for us, it is one of the tools in our toolkit, just like anything else. You know, we, we do not. I had this conversation with somebody saying, like, what do you mean you're still doing TC? No, we're doing, we're doing the portions of work, and the test results show it yes. works for us. Yeah. Where we saw that we had difficulty were those phonics. We saw that students were missing those decoding skills. We saw that. So we supplement, we add to it, and now we combine. And I feel that, you know, having done this for way many years, the pendulum is going to swing and it always swings. But how do we take the best of each piece that's out there and meld it to meet the needs of our students here at Night Side? I have to say, I think these scores are fantastic. I mean, you know, this is what I'm to the neighboring district, curriculum supervisors. So this, these scores are absolutely fantastic. So I think that is a testament to you as the educational leader of the district, as well as our principals, our supervisors, and really our teachers. I mean, they are in with those students every day. I mean, these scores are are outstanding. They are really outstanding. So they should. Everybody should be really happy with something like this. Um, special note even for grades three and four with excellent scores and for those that are not in education that don't know the state put a program together because for grades three and four that's where the, our COVID years really hit those students because they were so young and it's because in grades three to four is where they saw the state overall saw lowest score so they put a program together our grade three and four students don't even fall in anywhere into a category like that. Um, I also think it goes back to our COVID years where in COVID we were open. And except for the time that we weren't mandated or allowed to be, once we knew we were allowed to open those doors for those half day sessions, we were open. And I think that's really a testament to another great decision making um, on your end as well as the teachers that came in every day and, and did a job. So I couldn't be happy with these scores. I agree. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So are there are there okay. any uh, programs planned for or do we have them already? I know we have the uh, before school math. Uh, right. <clears throat> Looking at the science, while I know we're above the state, there's room for improvement there. Mm -hmm. Uh, is, there, is there anything like that? One of the things that we do have, I know we have, um, Ms. Donato is doing the ecology club. So it's more of a club versus a, an instructional class. Um, so we do have we do have that type of a club. We have the, the STEM-based types of activities for our students. Um, we haven't looked at this moment at a science one, and I think the one piece that we look at is definitely the middle school looking at OP, making that more targeted than right. if there's a need for, for supports in science. Um, 
The other piece is, again, and I think that it's more important that we can really, if we have the data to look at, is what are we seeing? Are we seeing that there's a concern because it's something that was taught back in sixth grade and we just haven't spiraled it? And if we're going to spiral it, are we spiraling it just, just for a test? Or are we spiraling it because it builds in? I think that before we necessarily, and I would never turn down that idea, um, I'm very curious to see things like this Gizmos program um, and using that and the Linkit science assessments. Both of those are new this year, so I think it'll be very interesting to see what impact, if any, it has on our next year's test results. Um, but it, you know, nothing is ever out of the question if we find students would need how do we support it. Yeah. It sounds like you're still going through the sub levels, right? Of, kind of what's what's the, the meat on the bone there? Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, maybe a fall meeting or something. Like that. There's uh, maybe a little bit more on the the science, right? Mm -hmm. As to what you found, yeah. and, and either it's to your point. Um, some of the questions were taught in sixth grade and were between for two years, and mm -hmm. we're not just going to uh, bring something up again for the, for the sake of the test or not. But again, just given the fact that they are lower than 50%, I think, in, in some of the areas, it, it's worth a, a follow up so we don't lose sight of it. Fair enough. Yeah. They will not see even what, you know, how much data we're really able to dig into. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Does that conclude you? That concludes my report. Yeah. I can ask yeah. on the dance if you like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're moving on. Our president, our president, our report. Sorry to use the point check. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Now we're moving on to the Mr. Hyman with birthday dates. Yep. Uh, only one. Only one side of piece of piece of paper. No, it's not double oh, sided. No staples. So. <laughs> Because we had one meeting since, since last week. Uh, so our last Berkeley Heights board of meeting uh, was uh, just just uh, on October twelfth. Um, we've got just upcoming. Uh, we have a special meeting on November second uh, that will be just specifically to look at uh, reviewing board goals. I think I mentioned that last last meeting. And then November sixteenth is uh, is the next full meeting. So uh, sports stuff uh, first. This is just student updates from uh, October twelfth. Football team at that point was five and two. They're six and two now. Uh, boys soccer team eight three and one. Uh, some nice rank wins over Eagle and Elizabeth. Uh, girls soccer team was four and seven. I can tell you in real time now they're six and seven. I just came from the game tonight, so they're back in the mix for uh, for making states. Uh, volleyball team was ten and five. Girls tennis ten and three. Field hockey eight and three. Uh, and field hockey team actually won their first ever division title. Um, Love GL, so they're excited about that. Uh, and the cross country just just had counties. Um, also, just a couple of interesting things uh, that were. Part of that meeting that came out of an uh, athletics committee meeting on October 3rd. Uh, the co op with New Providence for the ice hockey program is, is being re upped. Um, so there's, there's kids from Berkeley Heights and outside of New Providence that are on that team, two time state champs, by the way, back to back. Um, there was discussion, this is again from the committee conversation uh, that then were reported out in public uh, conversation about the uh, lack of air conditioning in the red gym at GL, which um, I know I have gotten emails about. Uh, from parents and mountainside. Um, trainer coverage, so right now there's just one trainer that kind of roams between all of the sports uh, up there and it's an issue. We've, we've used, that district has used different services like JAG to try to fill in, but it's it's not enough. So um, the, the this upcoming budget is likely to include uh, another trainer to try to cover more of, the, of those, uh, those sports. There was conversation about more space, to, uh, more expanded space for uh, female locker rooms. Um, sounds like it's, Definitely not equitable right now in terms of, of uh, what space is allotted, and so um, that is something that there's some creative solutions being being talked about. Rob Nixon talked a little bit about that. Um, lights at GL came up again. Um, we'll go too deep into this, but this is all interrelated because of um, control of Snyder Field, um, which, which GL will not have going forward um, to be able to dictate night games there. There's no lights at GL, um, although that's been looked at and is being looked at. Um, sounds like that's, I'll put that in the wish list for referendum uh, bucket along with a bunch of other things uh, that were discussed. Um, but there is a conversation between the, the, the township of uh, Berkeley Heights and the school district about uh, Lower Columbia and possibly putting in um, putting in lights there uh, to, to, to be able to maybe fix what's going to happen with Snyder. 
uh, head wrestling coach is uh, was on the agenda um, and approves a new head coach and new assistant coach um, uh, that, that uh, was on this past meeting's agenda. Um, also was discussion, I, know, I think it may have come up in our meeting at one point, uh, I don't know, not inside parents had asked about it, about possibly having a boys volleyball program at some point. Um, so that was that was discussed uh, and is referenced that uh, it, it is a possibility. She sees a path for it, possibly as a JV sport first in 2024 or 2025. Um, and certainly seems uh, amenable to moving in that direction. Uh, also, I thought it was interesting, uh, and the athletic director mentioned that 709 GL students played at least one sport last school year. So that's 76% of the student population. Yeah, it's a big number, a big number. A um, couple other things, October 2nd, there was a college and career fair at GL. I think we have at least one board member who was there. Uh, there are 100, 100 colleges in attendance. Uh, the 9th through 11th graders took the PSAT on October 11th. Uh, October 15th, uh, this past weekend, there was the GL Marching Band pageant uh, at GL. I think I mentioned it last time, the school play is going to be puffs the dates for the school play at GL, November 16th through 18th. Uh, that's evening, evening performances on November 16th, 17th, 18th, and a matinee on Saturday. Uh, we also, at this, at this last meeting, we had the HIB semi-annual report presentation. Uh, I thought it was interesting that investigations at GL went uh, from 30 in 21-22 uh, to 18 in 22-23, and as confirmed cases, they dropped from 11 two, two school years ago to nine, so um, that's a good sign coming out of COVID. Uh, and then we also had um, a district goals presentation uh, from Dr. Barley with a focus on big pillars of communications. Uh, they're going to create a green team, so things like solar roof uh, and, and, and those elements. Um, DEI progress uh, is a district goal, uh, also creation of uh, behavioral threat management teams uh, at all schools. Uh, and then there were some specific math and ELA improvement goals, uh, quantitative goals uh, at all the grade cohorts. Um, we also approved uh, an upcoming transportation study uh, and a separate school safety study, safety assessment that will be conducted at all Berkeley Heights buildings. Uh, and uh, and as I just mentioned a minute ago, Janet said that we approved uh, Kelly Curtis as the new director of STEAM, uh, that's effective 12 12, unless I guess they released her earlier, but it sounds like it's 12 12. So she's going to replace Dennis Dugunis. Dennis will become an assistant principal. That's already been approved. So he's Dennis is in that role until uh, December 12th, and then they'll, they'll move into that role, and uh, Kelly will move into director of STEAM, effective 12 12. So, and that concludes my yes, report. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. We're moving on at this time. I'll ask for motion to approve under administration items one through five. Comments or questions? Uh, so moved. Yeah, so moved. Sorry. I'll move one through five. Second. Roll call, please. Just before you do the roll call, I just want to mention item five. Um, as we always do, is our safety and security drills, but also our bus evacuation drills. Those are mandated by the state. And we do conduct our bus evacuation drills, so they happen at both schools. Yes. 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 Comments, um, questions? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Moving on, can I please have a motion to approve on the personnel items one through six? Uh, is it seven? Yeah. One through the. Oh, one through. Is this the update? Oh, the one through the agenda. One through. Seven? Yeah. One through seven. We were given the amendment. No. Right, so can I have more? So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Can I please have a motion on the curriculum for items one? Second. Comments, questions? Just uh, a comment that that's great that we were 
extending the, the field trips in the way we talked about this last meeting, but I think it's just probably great that we're involving the seventh grade and that there's a notion to try to extend some of these special trips um, beyond beyond the very packed year that is eighth grade. Yes. 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 Please have a motion to approve under policy items one through four. Comments or questions? I have one. I, I, I feel like I ask something related to this every time, but sorry, Janet. As 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 emergency virtual or remote instruction goes, so this is this is now um, what, on number three P twenty four twenty five. So there's there's amended language that talks about that um, commissioner. So in addition, pursuant the commissioner of education shall allow the district to apply 180 day requirement, uh, one or more days of virtual remote instructions. Does that mean I'm just thinking like if so if we burned our three snow days. Uh, does, does that let it down? So still, okay. Got it. We're still not there. Yep. Yeah. Still, yeah. Well, never. I mean, and even, I'll, I'll be honest, like, this came up most recently at a meeting, and uh, the question of uh, election day. Yeah. So election day is two and a half, three weeks away, yeah. and there's no statement to us as to whether or not a district who might choose to mm -hmm. right, could go virtual for election day. So you're putting together these other plans, but that is not well, something that has come out as a as a one way or another. So that's open to the individual district? No, right now you can't do it. So it's either you're closed or you're open. It's either you're closed or you're open right now. But last year, if you recall, they came out, I want to say like literally a week before election day and said, Oh, if you'd like to go virtual for election day, you can have that. That's great. It was very, very close. And for the primaries as well. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, on the, that line, I'm sorry, I know it's totally off track, but I will just share. We're, Beachwood will not have elections this year. Beachwood is going back to the church. Mm -hmm. So there will be no voting. I've been informed there's no voting happening in Beachwood. There is still voting happening here in Deerfield. But they are going back up to the Presbyterian Church yeah, for November. For November. Yeah, they can't take it all. I've been trying. <laughs> I've been trying. It's the camera thing. And you put that doesn't change our calendar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. We're still going to one more Any other consequences? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Yes.
I do want to also uh, recognize Mrs. Jack. She's the one who, who found um, Sergeant Rich. She actually knew him outside school and had heard of his programming and looked into it. So it was her recommendation to bring him in. And I think that it, again, very, very positively received and a good call on that part. Is that, is that an annuity or will we think of that as we go? Is that, that's, now it's a one off, obviously. But. So our thought was, as, as Bill kind of said, you know, he even said, like, he does a three to five and he does a six to eight. So kind of looking at it like every you know two to three years. So your third grade now who then becomes, you know, your sixth graders and those fifth graders are now eighth graders. So almost like they get it. That group gets it another time. Yeah. So say after two years he looks at all the information well, there. He was gonna he's looking at information that's of yesterday. Oh yeah, well right. so why don't you stand up about AI? Yeah. I, you know, this is that's a brand new world yeah. for all of us when it comes to artificial and he said like that's going to change probably all of this. Yeah. As as we as we move forward. Yeah. I'm going to a presentation of Candace's as well from the yeah. district. We're going to one on Thursday. Um that's being done at MUJC because I feel like such a novice. And from, from the seat, we are wanting to look at how does it impact our educational system? How does it, what are the pros, what are the cons? And how do we need to, what do we need to do to start preparing for it? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm looking at any committee reports to me. Um, I learned about the uh, sick leave that has been revised. I don't know if you realize it. Just before the budget was passed, the day before, uh, the governor signed a new law where you could use up to seven days for a personal leave. You could use it for illness for a family member. You could use it to go see your child, perform a play. You could use it oh, almost anything. And there's no questions asked. And they can't deny it. There were also blackout days. There's no such thing as blackout days. Uh, before a holiday, you, they could use the day. Uh, are you familiar with the new one? I'm a little confused with the. I thought sick. I, I'm a little familiar. Okay. And it says something regarding along the lines you can use your sick days if it pertains to taking care of your sick parent, your sick yeah, child. No days. questions. I wasn't aware of. Going to see it. Yeah, I know you can. You can yeah. yeah. for attending student. Yes, for yeah, attending yes. parent teacher yes. conferences. So we are for attending student parent teacher conferences. So there's also wording in it, and this is the policy yeah. that yeah. we yeah. had this evening. You can add it's on her. Medical attention oh. services oh. for some. Yeah. Um, no, I understand, but that's what the policy revised. But it also does state attend child school related conference yes. meeting right. function or other event. Right. Requested or required by a school, requested or required by a school administrator, teacher, or other professional staff member responsible for the child's education, or to attend a meeting regarding care provided to the child in connection with their child's health or disability. Um, and so it is very, very broad. Right, very broad. Also, like if you have a some or a good friend in the family, and it, it passes away or whatever, or the illness. You can get like the day, no questions. But when you're taking the days to clarify, you're still utilizing you're your six days. Correct. Yes. yes. Correct. They're not giving you. No. But there's no questions asked. It, it has greatly expanded. We can still ask for a doctor's note after a certain number of consecutive days. And uh, we can continue to do that. However, it has greatly expanded it, and it happens in addition to what's already in the collective bargaining. So, for example, you have death in the family days in the collective bargaining agreement. They can take those and then additional ones on top, utilizing sick time. So it has greatly expanded the the allowed agencies. So I hope you have enough subs. Mm -hmm. Is that it for me? Yeah. Okay, we're moving on to public participation. At this time, I'll open up the floor to, uh, to discuss any items of your choosing. Please come up to the podium, state your name, and address. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Hector Manessis. I live in uh, 126 Route 22 in Mountainside, off of 22. Um, I just wanted, again, thank you so much for all your time and giving me the opportunity to speak with you. 
I just have two questions, one for the superintendent and then one to for the board just to get additional context or history. So my first question is in regards to the presence report. Um, I wanted one question I have is in terms of the percentages that you provided for each individual grade level. Um, I wanted to know if there's an opportunity to, in addition to providing those different percentages, also providing absolute numbers as well, since uh, we are a relatively small district, and I think that might give us some clarity in terms of providing some type of histogram or seeing where the distributions are, like 12% for 100 students might be relatively different from 12% for 1,000 students. And I know that our district is relatively small, so I think that might be additive information that might reinforce some of some of our assumptions about the work that we're doing, which I think we're doing relatively well. And then in addition to that, um, one other question I had is, is does the state provide you data for that same testing for students that go outside of district? Um, is, that, is that type of, is incorporating that data into that report something that we want to consider in addition or not? That's just a question that I want to pose, not necessarily need an answer right now, but something I do, I think there's an opportunity to discuss about. So in terms of the numbers, just for the sake of this evening's presentation, if you assume really between 75 and 80 is our average class size. Mm -hmm. So that's about what you're looking at when you're talking about percentages. So you, you can kind of take a look at those numbers. Um, we don't typically break it out the exact numbers per section because one of the things we have to be very, very careful of is the ability to identify any specific student, which is why we don't necessarily do it at those grade levels. Mm -hmm. However, moving forward in the future, we absolutely could include the number of students per grade level. Right. Just just as a, as a frame of reference. Mm -hmm. um, but for, for your knowledge, that's that. In terms of students who go out of district, if they take the NJSLA, it really comes down to whether or not the district they attend reports on them. Mm -hmm. So they are reported on by a different district. So for example, I do not, even though our students at Governor Livingston are mountainside students, we don't report on them because they're all reported out at Governor Livingston. Mm -hmm. So it really depends upon the programming that the student attends and whether or not, um, and at times they are folded into our data. So if we were to report on them, they are folded into these exact numbers. We would never report out on them separately. Mm -hmm. They would fold into the grade level that is right there. Okay, that makes sense. And I'm assuming that the reason, I'm assuming that there, it's more of a privacy thing mm -hmm. for why we have that procedure. So that, that makes sense. Yep. And then the, the question I have that I want to pose to the board is, is there any capacity or consideration regarding updating the, the school website? Um, I personally had, um, trouble navigating, navigating for looking for certain documents that either the policy had, <laughs> Jordan and Alex knew this when I met, uh, spoke with them or over the phone regarding this, but I think there's an opportunity here to, um, update the website, make it more parent friendly, make it easier for, to push updates, have that as the central hub in addition to the email distributions that the principal sends out to the parents. Um, so kind of having like a two avenue touch point, one directly coming into their inboxes and the other one kind of having the hub of public access. And I think we have one, one distribution access really secure really well. I think there's an opportunity here to, in addition, kind of having, creating that space that public access space for anyone within the district to go and access that information. So that, that question is for the board. Um, again, don't need an answer right now. That's something to consider as well. But that's pretty much everything that I have. I think there I would have to be, there are some things that we need, you know, there's room for improvement. Um, that's something I think we've spoken about. Um, hopefully it's a work in progress. Uh, that's definitely, you know, thanks. That's definitely something that we really need to work on. You know, yeah, I feel like it's we've made strides. I mean, it's already um, evident. You're we trying to find a uh, policy, I think. So I mean, it's once you see it, it's all it's all intuitive in terms of drop downs and such. But I forget. I forget. I do think at some point we could talk about perhaps mm -hmm. maybe we make a full a full like, redesign kind of thing. I don't know if we got serious about it, but it's interesting. I know Berkeley did one. I don't know, six months ago or so. Yeah, before recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to say September they started. It was yeah. like now. Yeah, it's nice because you get it just in terms of discoverability and documents and historical, and um, it, it basically knocks out a lot of questions that, that would come up. You have a good point. I mean, there's areas that you want to look into, and as a community member, unless you speak to one of us, you wouldn't know have necessarily the access. But, you know, I do appreciate your comment on that. It would definitely take away. Thank you so much. No problem. Have a great evening. Yeah, at this time, can I please have, can, are we done? Can I get a motion to adjourn? All in favor? Aye. Both. That's it. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. I will see you November 21st.